This is another case of a BMW cam on a uh, recovery because it was broken down due to the battery light coming on. Now, I think um, the drivers, the owners don't know much of what is going on under the bonnet, under the car in the boot with this um, system because when the battery light comes on, on the, those cars, the hybrid cars we're talking about, 330E, 530E and, and so on, all the hybrid cars, there's no alternator. It's actually an issue on the high voltage system. Now, what we have here is a case uh, of a failure on the um, hybrid system. Now, here is the high voltage battery with all its components. Um, those are the modules, um, four in here and one underneath. So it has in total five modules. Here is the battery control unit and um, underneath are the relays that are uh, switching on and off um, the hybrid system. Now, the battery went down in this case and it's a bit out of balance, but the issue was something else. If we go uh, to the front of the car, I'll show you um, some interesting facts about this system and we're going to talk about more. And here we've got component components of a very important part in the hybrid system, in the high voltage system, which is this, which is the electric uh, motor inverter and also the DC-DC charger. Basically what this part does, transform um, the DC current into alternative current and then powers up the electric motor. Also, a section of it, it will charge the 12 volt battery. So it is responsible uh, with charging the 12 volt system when the uh, engine is running or when the ready light is on. So whenever the battery light comes on, on the hybrid vehicles, like BMW, uh, the reason is um, either there is an error on the high voltage system and this DC-DC charger. So basically it's a step down charger from the high voltage. It, it uh, puts out uh, low voltage, 12, 13, 14 volts to charge the battery. But it's either an error on the system and the DC-DC charger is not working or the DC-DC charger has failed on its own. Now, where we want to touch base is the cooling for those, uh, for the high voltage system, for the hybrid. So, battery on its own gets cooled, those are gets cooled, the inverter, also the charger control unit. And the battery gets cooled with AC, with air conditioning. So, um, it's critical that the AC works because that's how the battery gets cooled. And, uh, the battery temperature ideally should sit around 20, 25 degrees. Inverter temperature should not exceed 40 degrees. Now, uh, what is different with the inverter is that the, this unit is coolant cooled. So water is flowing through here and inside um, all this uh, chamber and is cooling, keeping cool the inverter. However, the cooling the coolant on its own, <coughs> which is also a special coolant, so the specification for it is HT12, this is BMW, the coolant on its own is not capable keeping such a low temperature. Therefore, again, as it stands for those cars, the coolant gets cooled with air conditioning. So again, air conditioning critical. So down, down, down here, not sure if you see um, good enough. So those uh, yeah, pipes, the aluminum pipes, yeah, they are coming to the a heat exchanger. Now, through that heat exchanger, the coolant is flowing and also the air conditioning. Obviously, air conditioning um, can flow uh, up to, uh, you know, zero degrees temperature. So uh, that will manage to keep the coolant temperature very low. And then obviously coolant will flow through the inverter or the charger to keep them down in temperature. So. No AC, AC not operating, the battery is going to be down, the inverter cooling is not going to work. AC working, the battery is going to have coolant, but the coolant not, um, so sorry, the cooling not working is not going to affect the battery. So battery is still going to get cooled if the AC works, but it's going to affect those components. And let me show you something quite interesting because here that's exactly what happened. The AC seems to operate, um, however, the cooling has not. And let's see what's going on, because see, this spray over here, so 
And here we have two tanks. One is for the uh, engine uh, cooling side, and this is for the hybrid, for the high voltage system. And look what's happening. Oh, <laughs> see, it's spraying. <coughs> it's only tiny. That makes a huge difference because this coolant level has gone down and guess what? Has affected the system. And let me show you how bad this is. So this is the, uh, the transistor, the IGBT, how is this called? The, the one that transform the direct um, current into alternative current to power up the electric motor. It does so critical, it does need cooling. And look what happened. Here is how a normal, a good one looks in terms of shaping. Look, literally exploded because of no cooling. Now, the question comes, and let me show you something else also. Does, see how they've changed in color? Again, no cooling. So it was quite a bit of temperature, if you think about to have the color uh, change on this, um, on this current bar. Then probably say, a uh, question might be, how can you avoid this? That's a very good question. And you know what, in here, I think it might be a bit of a design issue because there's no temperature gauges. So unless you're on it with a diagnostic tool where you can measure the stats about the temperature within the high voltage system, you know, not even for, for the cooling, you have to go in the hidden uh, menu, which doesn't really make sense. To me, the temperature gauges they are so critical, they have to be there, not knowing how you ever going to stop before the car breaks down. Literally impossible. You have no warning. Um, yeah, for the air conditioning, you might say, because obviously if it's summer, you're gonna notice straight away, no cooling, and then you should pay attention. But if it's a winter, you're not gonna use the AC. Um, the battery is gonna degrade, but obviously, the inverter, it can end up in such a state. So saying all this, what should you do to prevent this from happening? Regular checks, make sure the levels are always correct. Is obviously, if the level goes down, if you see any drips, take action, don't leave it, because it can end up um, uh, in bits, it can end up expensive. And the other thing is, have it checked regularly, because the coolant might still be okay, but a pump can fail. Again, the result is gonna be similar. Um, not uh, circulating coolant inside the system, it's gonna end up overheating the components, it's gonna end up on failure, it's gonna end up with the battery not getting charged message on the dash and the broken down situation. So I think, uh, have we covered all aspects about? Do you have any questions that I might have not answered? Leave me a comment because uh, I would like to clarify as many uh, things as possible. And I hope you find my video interesting because we like to present all the technical aspects that probably you might not know just as a driver. So this is real situation from our workshop where we do a lot of repairs and each week we have at least one interesting video long uh, from start to finish, how the car came in, what we found, what steps we taken, um, what fix we made, what tests we did, other, and so on. Quite interesting. Below um, is the notification button and the subscribe. Click them both so you stay close for um, next video that is going to come over, guaranteed with interesting information, interesting repairs, translated in videos. I will see you soon.